welcome to All About the Bass. I am standing Lee. And I am not standing in uh, Nathan. I'm sitting down. And, and this is simply a silly fun video to show you... Uh, I'll be the judge of that. Basically, uh, <laughs> what's the difference between a 150 pound, that's money pounds, not weight pounds, bass, and a 7,000 pound bass. Whoa. Um, so Nathan's going to do uh, the bulk of the playing because he's good. Um, and you, the two uh, you, bases. You were. You, I did a play. thing. I did my best. You did your thing there. Uh, a bit of police. Yes, I love that there. bass line. Uh, the two bases that we've chosen are an Ibanez uh, Geo GSR 180. I think it is GSR 180, which you can pick up from Anderton's now for the princely sum of about 150 pounds. Mm. Um, we have an enormous bass department at Anderton's uh, with lots of bass guitars at all sorts of different prices. But of course, if you go right to the end of the scale, uh, you could walk away with something like this. You've got to see this close up because it is the most stunningly beautiful bass I've ever seen. This custom made uh, Warwick bass uh, called the Streamer Stage One from Warwick's custom shop with this incredible Kraken kind of graphic on it. Beautiful. Um, sort of naked beautiful lady. Thing. Naked lady about to be eaten by an octopus. Crikey. Like you see. So Nath, yeah. Um, we're going to use the same amplifier for this demo. Nathan's using a little Marcus 500 watt Mark bass. Oh, we can use that one. Head. It's up to you, man. What do you want to use? I don't know. Want to use the Agu Aguilar, the Christina Aguilera signature bass? I don't mind. Uh, what? No, stay in your one. It's fine. Uh, so give us some notes, a 20 second doodah on that, and then we'll plug over and. First impressions? Get. Yeah, first impressions. 149 quid. I'll tell you what, you know what? That's really nice. Yeah, we always say that about I the GSR got, I have not got a problem with that bass it is at a, all. It is a jolly fine instrument uh, great, man. Uh, to get you going on and possibly a bit beyond that. But anyway, get, get definitely, some, get definitely a bit beyond that. You know, you can go out and gig with this, no probs. Uh, you've got, uh, it's pretty simple layout. You've got two uh, pickups, it's like a jazz bass sort of layout. And then you've got a volume for each pickup and a tone. Uh, pretty straightforward. So back passive circuit. Passive circuit, absolutely. Well, what do you want for 149 pounds? <laughs> yes, it is passive. Yes, you could put some batteries in it, but they wouldn't do it. <laughs> So there, um, there's that one. There we are. Have a blue one. <laughs> That's not funny. What's funny about that? It's quite a lot heavier, the expensive one, isn't it? This is beautiful. This is the first just time I've picked this up. It's just ridiculous. So this one, what have we got then? Volume? Yeah. Uh, pickup select, two pickups. Yeah, a Obviously. blend and a treble and a bass. Blend and treble and a bass. With a uh, little center, what? So we've got cut and boost. Yes. On the EQ. Boost. And Bartolini. Pickups. Barolini. All right, we'll start off with the back one then. Thank you. 
run out of things to play I mean, it's, and tones. Okay, so let's. Uh, it's fifty times Is it? more expensive than this. <laughs> fifty times more expensive than this. That's quite a lot of times more expensive. It's quite a lot it? more times. I mean, it looks fifty times better. Well, do you know, I think, to be honest with you, I think that's what we're looking at here, really, yeah. is just the, the, the amount of work that's gone into yeah. this, because it does look amazing. Oh, that is what's happening. Do you know what? I was trying to think to myself, I was moving my chair backwards and forwards going, I'm sure this bass is... And then I had one of those, when I first saw it, I had one of those moments where I just thought, I must be high on some sort of LSD or something. Someone spiked my coffee, this weird thing's happening. But I've realised it's not magic at all, it's just where my stool was doing it to the bottom of the... Stand. Mind you, you could think if you could think of a use for that, you might make uh, loads of money. What for, for that? Anyway, yeah. So, I mean, you're the player, and I guess this, the the at what point do you go? There is a reason as a professional bass player to spend more than 150 pounds. You know, in terms of uh, tone reliability. Uh, the the uh, consistency not consistency is the wrong word but you know as you as you travel and tour and the bass goes through different temperatures mm -hmm. and humidities mm -hmm. you know you know you want something you haven't got to do a big setup on every um, yeah. so there's a point on that price curve where it's still worth paying extra as a professional well, bass player and then there's a point beyond which everything becomes like a personal just how bad do you want to own something well to be honest with you I mean. Uh, really, it's all about what your budget is. It's how much money you've got. Because a great bass player, you know, um, will make any bass sound great. Uh, because do, it's you know any, do you know any? No, I don't. No, <laughs> he's not here today, unfortunately. <laughs> but no, I'm serious though, because it is all in. The, it's so much of it's in the fingers. Yeah. Right. So 150 good bass, but you know, it plays really nice. That's yep. the thing about these days. It doesn't have to be rubbish. Yeah. No, no I, they, I totally they, they, agree. You know, they, they'll make really nice basses for a ridiculously uh, cheap price. Yeah. So nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. Um, and then this, obviously the other end of the scale, you know, but then if you've got loads of money, right, like loads of money, and there's yeah. plenty of people in the world that have, then that's going to be a drop in the ocean. And yeah. they're going to go, I just want the nicest looking bass I could possibly find. Yeah. Is it, is it, it's really that the um, similarities to buying a watch, I think, kick in here. I mean, if you just Absolutely. want to, if you just want to tell the time, yeah. you go and buy a twenty quid swatch. Does swatch even still make watches? I don't know. That was when I was a kid. It was like you, you know, is, swatch. You could is. get like a twenty quid watch. It kind of looked funky and it told the time. Yeah. Happy days. Or, but you know, your dad or someone like that had a five grand Rolex because he could. Mine didn't. Well, <laughs> yours isn't. I've just seen your watch. You're wearing, you know, you've got oh, the old Cartier yeah. on there, haven't you? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Is it a real one? Yeah, it is. Well, there we are. Yeah. That's what, so look, so everybody at some point or other makes a decision to go, I'm just buying something because I can, mm. not because it tells the time. It doesn't even tell the date, does it, that thing? Yes, it does. Where? Somewhere. You can't, you're so blind, no, you can't, can't even read it. I can't even tell what the time is. And I'm it so doesn't blind. tell the date. It's As not I've even never working. never Nathan what the time or the date is. It just, Hello? It just look at it and go, about half past three. Yeah. Um, it's, no, it's pointless. It's, it's like a... It's a beautiful watch, it's though. It's a, it's a beautiful looking watch, and it's something that you will want to keep and own and pass on and all you know there's a there's a different emotional sense of you know, course that i think that the you know i mean i, I the, the lower you go uh it's you cease to form that sort of bond and you just sort of go you know it's just a tool it does a job it's, i agree it's I, I know what you, i know what you mean but as far as as like you're talking about a professional bass player mm. it really literally it, it's how much money have you got you know what mm. i mean you know because I, I, you can go out and gig with this now no problem yeah. i'll go and gig with that that's fine I think you're. If I won the lottery, yeah, and I thought I'm going to go and buy a bass, yeah, I wouldn't walk out with that one. No, I'd walk out with that one. Yes, and that's really all your. That's all there is, isn't it? If I was a professional bass player getting paid, you know, seventy five quid to go and do a gig three times a week, mm. uh, I'd be going. Well, not much point. You know, it's going to take me seven thousand gigs to get my money back on well, that. Also, whereas... you'd be terrified. You wouldn't want to take it out of its case, would you? Well, that's. That's definitely a, I always feel that that's one of the biggest uh, sort of shames about um, if somebody does buy an instrument like this and yeah. guitars are just the same as bass and they're like, oh my God, it's just so stunningly beautiful. There's so much workmanship going into this. I'm frightened to touch it. Yeah. I then always feel that's such a shame because the, the, the underneath the very attractive visual, um, 
that one of the finest bass luthiers in the world made this instrument. Mm -hmm. And to then go, I'm a bit worried about playing it. Just kind of like, oh, it's the you, so you, 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 you wouldn't, you take it out at home but, and but, stuff, but like you wouldn't want to take it down the dog the and trumpet, would you? Cars are the same. I mean, uh, how many people, well, not how many people do you know, but, you, you know, but it's not uncommon to find the guy that's bought the Ferrari and keeps it under a cover and only ever takes it out for 10 minutes at the weekend because he's too frightened to... Well, then just jumps in his focus and goes down the Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same, you know, I kind of think, personally, I think it's, I love hearing stories about people who've bought really expensive stuff and use it all the time. Because I think, well, that's what it's for. But that's... Well, no, yeah, that, that is true. But I think it's, that's probably more the exceptions, yes. really. So what have we proved, Nathan? What have we proved? Yeah. Or what have we demonstrated? Um, that you don't need loads of money to get a nice base. But if you have got loads of money... Get a nice bass. <laughs> it's pretty simple. I think we How should just end on that. I think we should end on that. Absolutely. <laughs> is um, this worth seven thousand pounds? Well, yeah, it is to somebody. You know, look at that. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's just a, it's just a beautiful piece of work, isn't it? But um, you know, if you want me to go and play up the uh, pig and whistle. Uh, tonight, you, would, you wouldn't take that down the pig and whistle, would you? I don't think I would well, be. Some, no. some drunk bloke chucks his bag of nuts over it. And exactly. You know, you get a chip at oh, just That would be bad. It would be it? terrifying. No, but I'd happily go down the mm. pig and whistle I and want, play that. So. I think that's uh, whoever whoever did the the drawing on that is fantastically talented. That's cool. Um, right? I've underplayed it really by saying whoever did the drawing. I'm sure it's a. <laughs> I don't even know how that's done. You know, I mean, it's just fabulously. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Fabulously, fabulous. That's a beautiful thing. And of course, uh, mm. you know, let's not forget that Warwick's a beautiful basis too. So, it's uh, a beautiful place. Look at that, look at that. I think it's important to mention, I've been on a little journey recently uh, to see um, about doing some of our own branded or, or, or um, lower end instruments. Right. And I went and bought from a couple of fairly well-known other large retailers not necessarily music ones although one of them was okay like the cheapest thing that you could buy yeah on both the bass and the guitar side of things right and, they, in, and what in their name of research yes because and and they were crap were they yeah so like, I, how much then what were you like where them? you get the bass and the amp and everything for like 99 quid you know okay uh or the guitar and the amp and everything for like and, and it was like there is a, there is a, I mean, I think Ibanez do an amazing job no, with that, this that, at 149. That's really, no, that's nuts. That, but, that's, that's, a, yeah. that's a really nice base. But I wouldn't go any lower than that. That's what I was just, I wanted to just sort of go, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go. Well, you need oh, a five okay. string. Yeah, well, this is true. Ah, see? Um, base, but base, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't stretch the argument beyond going, yeah, yeah, so it's fine. Just get yourself a 50 quid base or an 80 quid base off, no, the, no. off of some sort of oh, good Lord. catalog that you've never heard of. Cause the, well, no, you wouldn't want to do that because if it turns out when it's unplayable, it's not going to make you well, want they, to play it. These it? literally, I wouldn't quite go so far as to say unplayable, but next to impossible to, to keep in tune, horrendously bad intonation, um, really scratchy kind of fretboard. And, you know, and again, you just go, hmm. Not, not the kind of you know if you if you're really well, it's, want, it's going to put you straight off. Yeah, if you, you want to give a kid every opportunity to go, oh yeah, this is good, and I'm making some good noises, just avoid the uh, the real, real cheap, the, the really tooty stuff. Uh, yeah. Or just go to a reputable uh, music store like Anderton's, and and uh, they'll tell you, you know, that they'll say, yeah, that's okay. Or that's unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, look, this was supposed to be a short video um, and it's not been. So apologies. It's getting uh, longer all right, the time. She said. <laughs> I will see you next time on All About the Bass. Or maybe I won't. Maybe normal Lee will be back for that. But uh, Nathan will be here for sure. For sure. So see you next time, folks. Bye bye and save up your money. Bye. <laughs>